Hey guys, Julian here, and today, you may be wondering why I'm in Live 9. So today, I'm going to be talking to you about my new, updated drum bus for Live 9 rack. So, I'm just going to give you a demonstration really quick. Here is this little loop that I have without the rack. And here is with the rack. So yeah, I get a lot of questions from you guys asking how to use drum bus in Live 9. I use drum bus a lot in my videos. It's a really great little effect that Ableton created for Live 10. It works really well for fattening things up and kind of gluing things together and just making everything hit really hard and nice and professionally. And the thing is, is that you simply just can't really use it in Live 9 until now. Like, it just doesn't work in Live 9. However, I've gone through and now made this rack for Live 9 that approximates it and sounds exactly the same. So, in the past, I made something like this. I have a V1 of this. Some of you guys may recognize this. This is the new version. I've gone in and I've improved the saturation. I've improved the compression. I've made it a lot cleaner and a lot smoother and a bit easier to use as well in terms of just like getting your sounds to sound like full and interesting and textured. I think this version does a lot better of a job in terms of just giving things like the texture and really quickly just being something that you can drop on anything and it's going to sound really fat and nice and full. So what drum bus is, is essentially three different types of distortions with some transient shaping and a little bit of filtering and then it has this thing called the boom. So you can see I have this here. What we've got is we've got this trim knob so this is on drum bus the one in live 10 it just allows you to control the input going into drum bus so that you can make it hit more there's also this damp knob here and you can hear that allows you to dial out some of that high end which you can hear this is really useful because you can make your sounds darker it's not just like a low pass filter yeah, you still have some stuff in that high end a little bit, but it just allows you to take this from like this nice clicky kick to a nice sort of darker kick. And you can do this with any sound that you put into this. There's also the drive and crunch knobs here, so we could tweak those a bit. And you can hear it just makes the sound hit harder and fuller. We've got these different distortion settings as well to approximate the soft and medium and hard settings that come on the original drum bus. And then there's this boom amount down here which allows you to control how much of the boom that you bring in. So if you want that like fat low end on your kick, you can bring it in, or you can kind of dial it back a little. And then this also allows you to tune the boom with this key here. So like if you want a high one, you can tune it up. You know, if you want it to be more like deep and sub, you can kind of turn it down. And then there's this transient knob here. And this is, I think, a really nice thing with this. This one actually, I think, makes it hit a little bit harder than the one that comes on drum bus. So if I turn this up, you can see what it does. Is it's giving the sound more punch. So it brings out the transient of the sound. The transient being like this little part right at the start here. Sort of like the click of the sound. That stuff. Because you can see if we cut that off, the kick becomes really soft. So then this just allows you to sharpen that transient. Again, without it and with it, you can see the difference there. Like, this is really just designed to be a one-stop shop for fattening your sounds up and just making them sound really full. And it has everything that you need to do that. And yeah, and it's not just for kicks and basses. You can see I've used it on a kick and bass here. You can also use it, like, on some hi-hats or something like this. Like, let's just grab this loop really quick. I'll warp it.
And then if we drop the rack on. So here is before. And then after, and you can really hear that like fatness that is adding. And if we turn up the transients, we can make it kind of hit more. This damp is also good for making things kind of a bit deeper. And more on lo-fi. But yeah, so the link to this rack is in the description. I just wanted to create like a new version of this for you guys because I think I've learned a few different things about how it works and how you can really get your sounds to sound full and just huge using something like this you know drum bus again is really one of the best additions that came in live 10 and it's a shame you can't use it in live 9 but now you can with this rack and also with this you get i have these 10 kicks that come with it as well figured i'd throw in some bonus kicks so that you guys could get started with this but yeah and i'll show like i'll talk to you a little bit about why something like this is important as well this is important because Honestly, you just can't play your sounds just dry how they sound like with nothing on them Like if I just take all the processing off here And we literally just have like dry kick dry baseline dry hi-hats You know it just sounds too like flat it just doesn't have like that life to it So you need something like this on your sounds. I try to do something like this at least one time on every element of each track like you know if i have a lead synth for example not just gonna have like a lead with some echo and some reverb it's gonna be like the lead echo and reverb and then something like this like either this or saturator or drum bus itself if i'm using 10 but you need to use something like this because again like if your sounds are dry like this you know it's just too flat compared to this You know, this hits a lot more, and it's going to put your stuff on par with other tracks as well. Like, a lot of times when people have an issue where, like, you can't get your sounds to be as full, or maybe your kick isn't hitting hard enough, or your bass line and your kick don't sound full enough together, it's because you need something like this on multiple things at once, and to be just, you know, giving it some sonic color and character throughout the track. Dry sounds... It's just they don't have any character to them. It's like, what is really the difference if you don't have anything on this kick between hearing the kick in the track and just hearing it in a sample pack? There's none. You have to do something like this to make sounds your own. And so that's why stuff like this is so important and why it makes such a big difference in terms of, like, overall producing a track. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this one, guys. I just wanted to show you this new rack and kind of talk to you a little bit about why stuff like this is important as well. You know, again, you can't just have dry stuff. You need to do something like this to really fill your sounds out and make them sound professional and full and on par with other stuff. So yeah, like I said, you can get the rack as well as the 10 free kicks right at the top of the description on my Bandcamp. This is a great way to support me if you guys have been enjoying my videos lately. Yeah, as always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Thank you very much, guys, and I will see you tomorrow with another tutorial.